span in the works could be quite a, <laughs> quite a little ego graze there for Sparkle team going into um, you know the f- the final of the season. So that's going to be quite an interesting one, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the map bands. I believe we should have those ready for this first match of the evening. Yeah, here we are coming up along the screen. No clubhouse, no villa. We've seen a lot of villa this season, Grace. We have. We have, and I I actually like it a lot. I do like it a lot. I think it's been, it's really made or broken teams. Like, that's the thing. It's really dictated how that match is going to go. We are going to coastline, which I'm sure by now you all know I'm very excited about. We love a bit of coastline. We do love a bit of coastline. Okay, that's going to be incredible. And it looks like it was um, Sparkle team who decided that they're going to go there choosing to kick away Oricon. Um that's quite an interesting one. I wonder if uh, Lost Souls would maybe thinking, okay, they probably won't go to Cosine. We can, we can drag it to Oregon and then Sparkle have just gone, do you know what? Nah, yeah, we will go to Coastline. Maybe. I mean, Sparkle team have played Coastline twice already. Once against Nemesis, which was a 7-0 victory, and once mm. against Gypsy Queens, which was a 7-1. So we know that Sparkle team can play this map. It's an aggressive map. Mm. It favours the better gunners. And Sparkle team have shown, you know, that they are some of the best gunners in this league. However, when it all comes down to Angels, it does even the playing field sometimes for some teams, and we could see Lost Souls come through with a bit of a surprise and make things a little bit uh, closer than maybe Sparkle Team are expecting it to be. Oh yeah, 100%. And again, I think they've got a little bit of wind under their sails now, uh, and I think that's going to probably set the momentum going into this as well. I don't think if things start getting rocky, they're going to get too tilted by it, which certainly will benefit them. Uh, over if for example they start taking rounds of sparkle team maybe sparkle team with the pressure being on them in that top two spot now um maybe that will be a little bit rockier for them at the same time we'll just see what happens we'll see what happens i think this is going to be a very fun match i think both teams are going to go into this having a lot of fun to be honest as you say it's one of sparkle team's most favorable maps and lost souls we well we, we know that they have fun regardless of where they're going <laughs> anyway so um yes indeed i do think this is going to be a fab one obviously Coastline as well, it is, you're guaranteeing a barn, a barn burner here. I don't think there's going to be, you know, any slow monotony here at all. I think we're going to go straight into it and it's just going to be an absolute frag fest. And I am so here for it. Um, I think we've got all the players in the lobby now as well. So potentially we will be starting very, very soon. Uh, just going to have a little check with the players, seeing that they're ready and stuff like that. Um I, I'm kind of trying to work out if it's worth doing predictions based on the fact that it is the last day of regular season. Well, Ooh, spicy. I mean, with, with this first game, mm-hmm. I I just have to give it a sparkle team. They're the death stack. They're the gunners. They're, they're the Terminator walking towards you going <laughs> to like, kill you regardless of what you want to throw mm-hmm. at them. So <laughs> I have to give it to sparkle team. I want Lost Souls to do well, I want them to come out and perform well. Plus, their jerseys are well, they're pretty cool as well. But <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that another time as we are going to be getting on into these operator bands. Grace, this is Coastline, an attacker side of map where bands can sometimes get a little bit weird. They can, especially since those changes to Coastline, because obviously now you've got the external wall in VIP and that is making the use of hard breach far more viable. So potentially we'll see... Uh, a repopulization, I guess, of, of those bands coming out. But actually, first we're seeing Lost Souls ban out Zofia, which is <laughs> quite an interesting one. I think, again, maybe that's more down to taking away some of that fragging capability from Sparkle Team. Potentially. I mean, we know that Sparkle Team, as we've already said a couple of times, they're fraggers. They'll go out and get those kills. But, you know, Zofia has had a bit of a nerf re- recently. That AR is much more difficult to use. The LMG isn't as deadly. So it's a bit surprising that we're seeing the Zofia get removed. The utility is still there, but it's not quite the same. We'll have to see how that one plays out. The Jackal, though, that's a very standard ban for this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I agree with that. Again, it's not just the fact that you've got... A, when you've got, I suppose when you've got a smaller playing field... It's, you know, not that you'd be expecting people in nooks and crannies. It's just it'll give you easier opportunities to wall bank if you do get that ping off. The Maestro ban as well. Classic Intel ban. I don't think that's too surprising at all. Maybe we'll see a cheeky mirror here. No, we're going to see a Valkyrie. Another Intel. Again, very classic for this map, taking away that Valkyrie. Because some very nice external placements for those black eye cams as well. Um... A majority of the attacks can tend to come up towards those balconies as well. You know, you want to apply that pressure from the balconies towards those sites, towards VIP. 
let's see where they're going to start off then, Dino. Uh, typically, we would see a hookah billiard start, but it looks like we're going to see Lost Souls go to kitchen and service to kick us off. It's generally considered to be the second strongest site, so it's not too unusual to go there to try and um, sort of throw your opponent's momentum off a little bit, get that nice early round win and get going. But we are seeing a couple operators being brought out here that we wouldn't typically see. As I say, that the Oryx gets picked away, but we do have some uh, interesting changes that have come in in the patch yesterday, Grace. Capcan mm -hmm. can now place multiple traps mm -hmm. on the same door. And the Alibi's recoil for the MX4 Storm has gone Attackers way up. It's still controllable, bomb. but it can catch you off guard if you're not ready for it. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm very curious to see where these traps are going to be. Do you suppose they'll be on the service entrance door? Because I feel like that would be the one that makes the most sense to me, potentially. You know, go for that old bomb service uh, push there. Um, that would certainly catch people off guard if they're if they're stacked around that area too. Um, the alibi as well. I mean, what I would have liked to have seen is like a, a shield here. I think it's very powerful to have a shield facing that service entrance just in case they do go for the old school kind of service push. But um, thus far, we are just kind of seeing the traps being used as extension. I think it looks like they're just going to try and use a lot of these traps for intel and maybe just to annoy them a little bit. Again, this is a team that really want to have fun with it, so... Um, when looking at the composition of the kind of operators they're bringing, I feel it's slightly less serious. I mean, you can get a lot of intel out of trap ops. You know, Legion famously, he's not necessarily a direct trap operator, but he can give you a lot of intel. Those goo mines being spread around, and then when they pop, you know exactly where the push is coming from. As we are going to see one player hiding inside of Sunroom, but it's going to oh, be a team geez. kill coming right after Mia had gotten the kill onto Ari Shanice, stopping the rampage nice and early. Pandy's wow, going to get okay, one before attack. Yenna trades it out immediately, and the fairy with the follow up is going to put us already, Grace, into a three on two. The barns are already on fire, the smoke's coming out the sides, and this one's off to a hot start. The hay is fully sparked up now. Oh my gosh. A, a, a team kill in round one. You do love to see it. <laughs> Last game of regular season and the team kill coming out round one already. This is indeed going to be a barn burner, as you say. A 3v2. I mean, they do have a slight advantage on the fact that the, you know, these are two very intel heavy uh, operators. As I say, that Shanice gets nicely damaged and then downed. Uh, Pistia is going to try and win out a 1v3 now. It looks like she's going to try and go via the bar area but again a lot of things to do here potentially a tactical time up a minute and a half on the clock i reckon she's just gonna go for it i reckon she's just gonna try and give the old razzle that's all so instead he wins the race in these situations you know you often have to try and just do what you can again using this utility already oh it does get caught with the abs though and again, you'll notice that she actually flicks around very quickly to the west because there's always the off chance that someone is going to try and go for a cheeky run out, knowing that you are stuck in this 1v3 situation. Yeah, the big thing about all these trap ops is that it makes it impossible to enter Whoa! in without giving up your position. Hiss, you're still able to hit the shot onto the first player, but it's going to get followed up onto by the lesion. It's going to be a nice opening round for the defense, helped out in part by the team kill, but still just a good hold coming through absolutely absolutely and you know winning your first round on defense on coastline of all maps on coastline of all maps that's usually a little bit good going especially when it is an off-site like that um that can be I, mean, I think it's relatively straightforward to attack that kitchen area but again uh, a lot of aggression coming through from sparkle team which i loved and again as we say this is a french death stack it's an absolute monstrous roster i am expecting aggression for them and certainly now that Maya has switched onto that lion as well, do you know what do you make of those apples? I mean, it's Attackers it's the classic nightmare the combo, coastline and lion. I mean, <laughs> you, you just have to rotate on this map as a defense, particularly on this objective. You've got to go through these hallways and getting caught out if you're stuck in lug luggage from the EE1D going off. You're not safe from any direction. Luggage you can be crossfired from about Attackers four different spots, so. When used correctly, that lion could be incredibly lethal. But we have seen sometimes the lion go down early, and he's one of those operators who gets stronger mm. as the round progresses. Mm. So keeping Mia alive for as long as possible is going to be important. 
Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, and hopefully she, this time she needs smoke team killer. Five seconds too much. <laughs> no. Hey, I don't. I was insinuating that. I don't uh, want to yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, no. You know. No, it happens. It happens. Please, don't you worry. Don't you worry. No, I. I completely agree. Again, the more you get that map control, and you're forcing the defenders back towards the site. You're deforcing them back into those spots. Uh, the more powerful that global ability becomes. Hmm already where i think they are aware that there might be people lurking in the shadows on the ground floor as well i think yeah very much so they are aware there we are getting little pop shots trying to go for the pinch relatively soon it would appear from this area yes it is indeed losing half of her health thus far so potentially the time to fall back yeah it does look like that's indeed what she's going to do do you know i'm reloading yeah, I mean, you're going to waste a bit of time. You're going to attract attention as these players are going to have to push on through, clear out where you are. And being cat can, they can probably assume that there are going to be some traps positioned around. We are going to see some cameras be shot on out by the Zero of Istia, trying to gather as much intel as possible. And just make sure that the flanks are watched and protected as Mia. We talked about her having to try and remain safe, but it's not going to be the case. She's just going to take the fight immediately. Take down Mia. That's the Jaeger off the board. 100%. Some flashes coming out, clearing a little bit of a leg way there. There we go. There's that global ability. Oh my goodness gracious. I thought Mai was going to go for the plant then, but it's actually Luna that has it. Lovely shot there onto Yena as Luna. Oh, she's not going to stick with the fuse. There we go. She decides to turn around and take down Eri instead. Beautiful teamwork coming through there from the ladies of Sparta team. I mean, that was just a very quick take. They Clean. They, what do they do? They found that cap can downstairs inside of office. Mm. They cleared that position out. They then set up the zeros to watch for a flank. And then they walked into sight. I mean, that opening kill from Mia inside of uh, Aqua or on the Aqua balcony must have been just absolutely huge and must have been all that Lost Souls were really using to hold down that side of the map. So gaining that control, just being able to walk on in and get those kills, easy round. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, I, I kind of feel as well that um, now we're seeing this six onto the mirror. Maybe we're going to have a bit more bite from Lost Souls. They're choosing to change uh, the side that they're actually holding. Which again, I do much prefer when teams do this, when they actually try and go for a full rotation. Penthouse though, again, curious to see what they're going to do here. I've, I've been very, very interested to see if Penthouse becomes more of a viable... Um, defensive site now but you have got that extension and that new external wall onto VIP as our lovely observer is showing us um, again you can really open up that site and create these long angles these long lines of sight which means that realistically you don't have to hold it from within penthouse you can hold it from VIP and if people go for the old classic of you know holding that window holding the uh, bathroom getting all that VIP control then going to the plant it's now hard to get VIP control, so even if they try to rush it and force the plan, very, very difficult to do when you've got potentially seven different angles coming at you now. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to see the mirror get played. And this is why banning mirror on coastline is such a common thing to do. Without mirror, defending penthouse is a really difficult task. With mirror on the board, it can become relatively easy. You just need to make sure that you keep heavy control over that theater position and then isolate anything that's coming on in through vip and this balcony and unless we see sparkle team start to switch up and try and apply some pressure from the south and the west across the objective then we might see a bit of a challenge for them but it's not going to be a case for that opening kill as that's going to be histia to take down airy going to start getting rid of some more of this utility get the cams on into the site and just see what's going on as mia once again just walks on in and gets a kill this time on Vienna. And I, I kind of loved the uh, the zero cam placement there in VIP. It was kind of similar to how you used to do the old school kind of Valkyrie cam up in VIP, but like an opposite version for the attackers to use Drake. Beautiful shot there onto Istia. As I'm sure you could all tell by Dino's reaction. <laughs> Luna also getting the trade off there back onto Drake too. Looks like they're going to set up for this collapse and execute. There we go. That plant is firmly being plonked onto the floor. Very falls. To Pandy, it's all left down to Meep now on this bandit in a 1v4 versus a French death knight of Sparkle team. And there we go, Janice is gonna finish it off. Job is a good one. An entirely unenviable, unenviable position at the end of that round. 1v4 versus 
anyone is hard, let alone the French death stack. So, you know, not not the ideal situation to be in. Lost souls, though. They had some good moments potentially in that round, but I don't feel like they really understood what they wanted to do with that VIP hold. They didn't choose to completely close off the walls and turn it into just a box that they have to burn a lot of utility to get through. And then at the same time, they didn't go for the extension and the direct hold itself using a shield inside of 90 with a nice long angle looking through. They kind of felt like they were going for the midway between. And Sparkle Team are just going to pick you apart if you do that. You have to pick one and force them to either use utility, use time, or use bodies to get through you. This is it. Yeah, waste their utility because at the moment they are using their utility so gorgeously, to be honest. Again, those zero cams, the way they're being placed is so... It's almost like mirroring the classic defenses in a way of coastline, and I really love that. The mirror, the um, lions coming out this, at the correct time. Lots of intel. Again, a small map with tons of intel feels a little bit overpowered, to be honest. Um, but again, having that close quarters with that line utility going off constantly it's really really favoring them and even there's moments where you know luna yes she is on more of a support role right now but she is you see her sometimes go for the plan and she'll immediately come off to see if she can like get a kill like they're hungry for it right now do you know they are raring to go Attackers yeah to locate absolutely and, and just came back can. to our wonderful faces there for a brief moment as we did have a technical timeout or a tactical timeout rather as the technical being called so you know, they want to sit down, they want to talk about it, they want to re-establish how they want to go for this, and, well, we are going to see Lost Souls go back to exactly the same objective this time. Looks like they're trying to get their set up more focused around this VIP. Judging by that shotgun blast on that wall, yeah, we're going to see the mirror come around and place her mirror looking on into Penthouse from inside of VIP. The bandit wires have gone down on that external wall, so might be a good time to really test what sparkle team can do when they're sort of challenged to go through more of a strategy and more of a utility based hold absolutely absolutely indeed and again i kind of feel like lost souls may batter down the hatches a little bit more it looks like the cheeky spawn pig takes a lot of damage off shanice but doesn't quite manage to land the kill but again, that's potentially going to put a little bit of a spanner in the works because obviously going into this on very little health, not ideal when you are an attacker. So much map control to gain, and if you're in a slightly weakened position, it can be quite difficult. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you just saw, Meep lose a lot of health there. Luna just holding this angle. Just because you have these walls electrified doesn't mean that your VIP hold is safe. Because this doorway can provide some very deep angles on through and... I mean, we've got three players over on the side of Lost Souls who have all been tagged up to some extent. Shanice has lost a little bit as well as going to have Nia start to make her entrance on in through Aqua. Absolutely. And again, it's, it's interesting because this one feels a little bit more, I would say slow and steady. It just feels way less aggressive, way less um, runaway train than it did the previous round. Aerie is going to start this off though with a pick onto Maya. I don't know if they're well a kind of um, handy kind of lurking in the bathroom though, Dino, which could cause an upset in a few seconds. Yeah, it's going to be Shanice to get the kill onto Eri, who is attempting to flank up those blue stairs and make life a bit difficult for Hystia. But as you say, we do have Pandy sitting inside of that bathroom. The challenge is, if she tries to move on out, she can be caught by that mirror that's positioned inside of VIP. Now, while Luna has been able to move up, she's chosen not to get rid of the bandit wires, and that's going to be Drake to take down Pandy. And following up onto Luna as well, this is now a four versus two, and Drake hungry for more. Almost got the pre fire one tap. So there's going to be the spray through the wall coming through from Histia to get the down. He's unaware as points are off, so the revive will be able to come on through, and Drake is going to be back up to 20 points of health. And the angle being held by the mirror, not going to be able to land the shot onto Hystia. But these last two players, Grace on Sparkle Team, they don't really have a lot of options here. Well, one option is to take down Meep. Shanice is going to start that off by getting that pick there, which is down to a 2v3. One more, and they can get a bit more even evens with it. Tons of utility coming out, though, from both sides. But oh, actually, no, not both sides. I think that was actually a slight blunder by the attackers there. See falls on the table though as well. If you are Lost Souls right now, you're feeling pretty comfortable because it's like, well, realistically, we don't have to peek. Let them come. Whittle that timer down. 20 seconds on the clock, Dino, and they've got two C4s in pocket. 
Yeah, Hitsia opening up this back wall is going to provide a nice line of sight. It's going to force players to move, but without the time, really, it's going to be an obvious play to go for. Hitsia jumping on through as Fairy's going to get the kill onto Shanice. We did see the bandit rotate downstairs. C4 in hand could do a lot of damage, but it's not needed as Fairy is going to get the kill onto Hitsia. That's going to be Lost Souls Grace winning the second attempt at the penthouse and uh, theater defense. I find it a really nice actually that they managed to cause such such carnage there to be honest you know very much indeed i do think it was it's just again it's quite nice to see the utility use on both sides but also some really beautiful shots coming through from lost souls there uh drake on it both that beautiful little 2k really set the momentum for the rest of the team to be like okay time to step on the gas here we go yeah i mean that round was just drake got two kills uh, they didn't open that exterior wall into uh, VIP. The, they didn't open up that mirror early on to force the repositioning because while we did have the zero inside of Billiards, they never shot their camera up Attack onto the wall to, to just pop that mirror super bomb. quick and early, which they could have done. And then Lost Souls, all they had to do was sit and wait Attack and hit those shots at the end. The and that's exactly what happened. Sparkle team sometimes letting these man disadvantages start to build up and... They're good, but, you know, when it's a two versus four, not many teams are going to be able to win that. No, not at all. Um, I mean, again, I, I, I really would like to see a... Sh oh, wait, no, there is a shield. They brought the alibi shield this time, you know, and I'm just kind of curious as to where that is, and I really want to see the placement, but I can't quite see it. Am I being blind? I think I'm being blind. Attackers objective is getting bomb. positioned elsewhere. Where is this alibi roaming? Potentially upstairs would be quite an interesting one. Uh, we are going to see the mirror as well get brought out yet again. Fairy setting up inside of kitchen on mirror looking on over towards the service doorway just to uh, make things extra worrisome for the attack. Absolutely, it looks like they're going to go for a bit more of a standard take this time. They're not really going to try and go on any of a any of a room clear at all. Yenna's going to fall, however, um, to wait. No, Luna's going to fall to Yenna, so Yenna's going to get the opening pick for the side of Lost Souls. Yeah, that's the primary hard break down, which you know isn't exactly the end of the world. This is cosine after all, but it will make getting rid of those mirror windows more difficult. It makes Istia that much more important as those. Mm. The remaining hard breach is coming through from that zero, Attackers plus the cams, plus the, the zap. Hissia, with the diffuser as well, has a lot riding on her at the moment. Changing Absolutely, like the pressure is really starting to mount now as well. It's interesting to see, you know, it going so even Stevens right now. I think, again, I was thinking that maybe Lost Souls would throw a little bit of a spanner in the works, and so far I do think there is a spanner working. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works okay yeah, no i liked it you just caught me off guard with it <laughs> <laughs> uh, pandy has taken control over sunrise and is going to be getting rid of some of these alibi holograms it's going to hold down this cool vibe says drone's going to come on through and that apparently is the signal to push right into the waiting arms of drake who actually looks like she's going to back off no she's just going to hold on the stairs the amex for storm at this close range is going to be good for at least one as Pandy trying to get the angle is able to work the headshot not expecting that peak was right because area is going to follow up and get the kill onto Hestia the drop down from up above is good for one it's good for two and now Pandy and Shanice left two versus four Grace this is the same story we've seen before this time it's starting off well for Sparkle as Shanice is going to get the kill onto Airy. Pandy had rotated around to try and see if she could get that kill but this Surya Gate is going to be reactivated again. Shanice can run on through and deactivate it. That's going to be no more intel available for the attack as Pandy's starting to go for a bit of a peek, seeing what she can see. She is the full health player in this situation. You're going to want her to entry on in, see if she can take these fights. She's managed to work her way around by the bomb, but isn't aware of the Jaeger playing close. And now it's just Shanice low HP. The C4 getting thrown on out, and it's going to be Fairy with the kill. Lost Souls winning three rounds so far, defending on coastline with the potential for one more. I mean, that is a massive, like, fair play moment, isn't it? Yeah. If they can pull out one more defensive round in the bag and then set the momentum for the attack, again, an attacker side of the map should be relatively smooth sailing. 
this could be an upset, do you know? This very much could be an upset. Again, though, I do think there have been moments where I'm like, that's a bit naughty. Uh, lots of spawn peaks so far. I really want to see more of that, to be honest. Again, I think Coastline is the perfect map for it. And I know that's maybe potentially a controversial <laughs> opinion. Because not a lot, a lot of people like a classic spawn peak in competitive play, but I just think it makes it exciting. And it does catch players off guard. Attackers need to locate yeah, and defuse absolutely. as many bombs I mean, as they can. Looking back at Sparkle King's previous games on Coastline, the 7-1 and 7-0 performances against Gypsy Queens and Nemesis, respectively. Both times the Sparkle team started out on attack, and both times they won at least five rounds on that attack. This is supposed to be Sparkle team's stronger side, and Lost Souls are just coming out and putting an absolute stop to that. We've not really seen Sparkle team tested a lot on their defensive halves. This could be Lost Souls able to just carry on the momentum for the last two weeks and really put the spanner in the works. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm here for it. And again, there are lots of long angles that can be held here by these mirror windows on this side as well. The classic shield by the classic couch set up as well. A very, very smooth sailing place to plant on this site. So of course you want as much utility stack there as possible. The shield, it's a golden oldie. You just have a few ABSs to defend it. And drops a good one. Uh, oh. As it is, I was going to say, presumably Drake will be holding that. As well as they are smoke with the shotgun. And again, you want to be sending those toxic babes out. And no one wants a shotty to the face, do you know? I'm sure someone does. But... <laughs> you never know. Hey, there's something for everyone these days. As uh, <laughs> we are going to see the control taken upstairs by Lost Souls, but it's not going to last. Oh no, by Sparkle Team, but it's not going to last too long. As Meep is going to get that kill onto Mia before being ripped. Is Candy going to try and take the exact same fight as we just saw Mia take? Is going to have the defender run away for the time being, but it is going to burn a fragnade. It is going to waste time. Utility is going to be used. So this angle from Pandy up above is going to be able to get at least one mirror winner. This hatch being left soft as well is also going to provide, you know, a bit of ease coming through for Sparkle Team as Airy gets taken down as well. We're good. Absolutely. I mean, I love the verticality coming through here from Pandy as well because I think, again, this is another map where there is just so much destructibility and can really catch people off guard. And now the defense have no C4. The one C4 they brought has indeed been used, so... Um, much, much chaos really can rain through from Sparkle Team as Lost Souls. They have to rely on gunpowder alone. Yeah, Pandy, you know, wanting more of an open floor plan for this building, you know, not happy with the way that it was originally decorated. It's going to be doing a lot of redecoration. But this is burning time. And the players from Lost Souls aren't exactly being forced out of their positions. So long as Fairy is able to stay around this area and there's some pressure being held over onto those cool vibes there, it's going to make things difficult. But Hissia is going to walk on down and get that kill, even out the man count now. As Sparkle Team is starting to realize that maybe, just maybe, this Sunrise Bar is clear enough to go for a push. But it's not, because we do have Drake still sitting inside. Janice is going to get that kill onto your area as Hissia holding up above. Watching for the rotates, making sure that no one's coming through. But less than 30 seconds to go. It's going to be the drop. It's going to be the peak. And Drake is going to get that kill onto Hissia. The frag is going to come on down. But Pandy needs to move out of the way. Otherwise, that's not going to work out. What for her is Drake is going to get the follow-up. Luna is able to take down the smoke. Putting us now into a 2 versus 2 And Luna has the diffuser. But her teammate, Janice, is inside a kitchen. Potentially too far away to help. Especially when Meep is going to be able to get that kill. Shanice can't help from the afterlife. And now it is just Luna left in a 1 versus 2 And can't go for the plant. Trying to stick it right next to Yen as Vera when they're going to get off it. And that's going to be Lost Souls Grace winning all rounds defending on Coastline. Yeah, that is really, really good going. And again, perfectly towards the end, just playing the time a little bit. They didn't try and rush her or anything. They just held their angles and let her do the overthinking. Very, very well played there by Lost Souls. Very curious to see what kind of attack they're going to bring now, though. Will it be as clean cut? Will it be a bit chaotic? At the same time, the Sparkle team, they may retaliate with some very aggressive defensive plays based on how aggressive their attack was, based on the fact this is their map, Dino. This is Sparkle team's map. Yeah, it's all going to come down to how well Sparkle team can... You know, pull out all the stops. We are going to see Mia pick up that rook and 
we know how well she can do on that. That nice little additional powered optic is always good on an MP5, as we are going to have the Cat Can get brought out as well. Defenders a lot of love coming out for Cat Can at the moment. Those changes are really making him a popular operator. I guess maybe teams are hoping that they'll forget that you can put multiple traps down on a door, and then they're just kind of expecting you'll shoot one up and then go running on through, and then maybe, maybe that's the case. I have to see if Shinnis' cap can traps are going to be more effective than the ones we saw from Lost Souls, because I don't recall any of them actually being activated or, or detonated. Absolutely. I mean, Ten seconds to go. it's interesting because I, I I really like the fact that Lost Souls chose to start Service Five Kitchen, but I do think that it makes more sense to start kind of hookah billiards. It's like classic starts of rotation here, and. I'm wondering how much Lost Souls will actually predict that going into this. Also love the fact that Lost Souls are bringing the capital, to be honest, because... Firstly, like, I, I, I know it can be situational, but I do think, Changing especially mix. for a map like Coastline, capital is so, so powerful. You can really, especially if you know that someone's kind of lurking around there in a really specific position. Again, if you're attacking something like Sunrise and there is that smoke behind the shield, if you can burn those ADSs or whammies enough, send in a firebolt, jobs are good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the capital fireboats aren't caught by ADSs. They're only caught mm -hmm. by Wamai. So mm -hmm. we're not seeing a Wamai being brought out by Sparkle Team, but we are going to see that Cap can get the opening kill, taking down Yenna. But yeah, we could use, well, you could use that Cap can to force players out of positions like behind Sunrise, like behind Mirror Windows, like inside a VIP, and really make things difficult for the defense. There's going to be interesting to see where Fairy chooses to use them as Drake is still choosing to hold from outside of this office area. Maybe thinking that Shanice is going to go for a full rotate all the way on around as Fairy is going to get tagged up a little bit repelling on this hookah window. So they're even making their approach now. It looks like they have VIP kind of Hall of Fame control. I think they are aware of the player around theatre as well. So of course, more players will probably join in VIP soon as pressure starts getting applied towards. Oh, well, Shanice actually isn't going to care too much about that pressure, taking down me, but she is going to fall back nice and safely to White Stairs just in case a pinch is coming through to deal with her. Yeah, this is the perfect kind of roam coming through from Shanice. You're going to get one, you're going to relocate, wait patiently, go for another strike with the frag. going to see if she can get her from below, but it's not going to be the case. Denise is safe for now, but Drag is all, Drake even, is all out of those frag nades, and her position is going to be known. We could potentially see a peek coming on down those cool vibe stairs in just a second, but the rest of the players on Lost Souls are just scrambling to try and find something hissy hiding inside of Aqua is going to be able to get that kill onto one. Pandy's going to follow to get that frag onto Drake, and now it's just Eri who's able to take down Hystia. But this is one versus four, one versus three, and prepared for the next fight onto Pandy, but it's going to be the Aruni able to win it out. That's going to be Sparkle Team having a strong start to their defense. Absolutely. I did think for a second there though, that Shanice might, might have flanked up uh, White Stairs and I was kind of waiting for it like, ooh, is this going to be the old bamboozle? But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. They just had to get a bit kill hungry with it and go to the corridor and shoot her across the courtyard, which fair enough. I respect it. We all can be a kill goblin from time to time. I mean, they were getting dangerously close to breaking my rule of three, which is as long as you have at least three people left in a 1vx situation, you can troll as much as you like. <laughs> as soon as you get to three or below, that's when you need to stop trolling because things can go very, very wrong. So, mm. getting getting a little close. I won't call them out for it this time, but uh, <laughs> just, I got my eyes on you. Defenders, Good. Protect your bomb Good. <laughs> I'm <that>. glad. <laughs> you know it's what flies. Always watching. <laughs> Old I can't... Chrome boy no, it's that it's that thing from Monster Sync, isn't it? Oh yeah. Ruff, 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 Ruff. I can't even say his name. Krasowski. Krasowski. I don't know. Mike Mark, Mark Krasowski. Always watching Krasowski. I don't know. Krasowski. I don't know his name. The green one with the eye. From one of the greatest animated films of all okay, time. Okay. You've just forgotten Mike Krasowski's name. That is. I said Mike. Wazowski. You said went, Mark Pazowski. I did say Five Mark. Okay. Moving swiftly on before we have an argument about Monsters Inc. <laughs> in the middle of the cast. <laughs> I think this is going to be quite a nice setup here again. It looks a little bit 
uh, a little bit classical, a little bit classical. We've got the smoke as well, assuming that shield by the sofa, and then they've got all that upstairs control as well, well through the roamers. So very difficult, very difficult for the attacker to approach again because they've only got Eri there on the sledge really, who can go for the verticality, which you wish for it. There are, you know, some grenades obviously right in Eri as well, but realistically, I think that's going to be safe for dealing with various people hid behind shields. <laughs> Yeah, people sitting behind shields is a, a common occurrence in this game, just in general. It's a great thing to do, it's a very powerful thing to do. One thing to note is we're not seeing Sparkle Team bring out sort of the mirror as much as we were seeing from Lost Souls, which, I mean, it's still work. well, I say it's working for them. It's been one round and it's kind of working for them as Eri is just going to be able to get that kill onto Pandy, getting almost needlessly aggressive and Eri prepared for the second fight, isn't able to land the shots, but with this door towards luggage closed it's going to cut down one of the angles that she needs to worry about and can focus all of her attention onto the players holding up inside of Billy. she's going to be able to make her way on into aqua get rid of the cam get good positioning and start to make things a little bit more difficult for those defenders absolutely i love how much the ladies of Lost Souls seem to cook these nades as well and just use them at every opportunity that they possibly can there's been a i love it every single piece of utility is getting cooked and used to try and bait people out try and to get a instant down almost it seems Enemy blocked that's good usage coming through as airy still Building. concerned about someone playing inside of hookah she does have a drone available in pocket to throw on out and try and gain some information but that would leave her isolating on a cam and potentially open to a flank so ideally she will want a teammate to come through and get a drone going for her at the moment but they all they're all holding their own positions Airy is concerned about a flank potentially coming up white stairs or someone sitting inside of the courtyard with less than a minute to go lost souls and need to get some kind of action plan going for this final stage of the round absolutely <laughs> looks like they are going to start making their way to the ground floor though and ooh, firebolts coming out again that's very very interesting it's going to stop people rotating there from the sunrise bar they do have a lot of control here to work with, to be honest. Meep could essentially just hold this angle until... There we go! Oh no! Shanice is actually going to take her down before she can do anything about it. Like, is going to retaliate by taking down Myra as well. Shanice on the tiniest bit of health, ready and waiting with this really long angle. But again, ideally, they need to be getting to where they need to be. It's all I found to Histia. They're going to have to bait for the plant, but they can't. There we go. Drag. Drag's on an absolute tear this map, to be honest, you know? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, she started picking it up the last couple of weeks and it's just not slowed down at all. But Shanice with that flank, Meep had the diffuser. That could have been held by Shanice and made things really, really difficult. I don't know if she was aware that she had the diffuser at her feet, but Sparkle Team, oh sorry, Lost Souls able to make the recovery. Some nice kills coming through from Aerie. And yeah, Drake to close it all out. Just a good performance and Lost Souls Grace. Five to three. Mm -hmm. We were saying before, we were, we were working it out in our heads, if Lost Souls win here, mm. and then I believe if the next game goes to overtime, it'll put two teams on 10 points, and then it'll come down to round differential. And if Lost Souls don't drop any more rounds from this point out, things start getting real close and real spicy Attack between these teams. Oh, yes. I mean, we knew this was going to be a spicy one, but certainly it is getting incredibly hot. I was going to try to think of a word for incredibly spicy and I couldn't. Ghost chilies. No. What's that weird chili that's too hot? Like anyone. Ghost? Well, I'd say a ghost chili ghost or a chili. California, California pepper? Scottish bonnet. There we are. I don't know. Okay. Scottish bonnets aren't that hot, actually. I used to eat them just by themselves. <laughs> I'm a monster. Um... <laughs> Lovely setup coming through for this surface kitchen site as well. Again, a little bit standard, but we do love to see it. The mirror window is being placed as well. And a nice little kill hole. Or is it just actually reinforced? It looks like it's fully reinforced, actually, Dino. But again, that's going to give them a lot of intel about that lobby area, which sometimes teams can have a tendency to sneak up on you from that direction of the map as well. So I do respect it. I respect the need and desire to see what's going on in that area. Um, certainly when you are getting this close, you're potentially falling into match point. Gotta reload! 
Oh. Well, we are seeing Yenna be put onto that Monty, which implies a service plant, particularly when we have mm. smokes and the fire bolts as well. We are going to see them try and take this top floor control, which will give them an easier time of going for it. The Nitro Cell is going to come on out, but isn't going to catch anything because no one actually found themselves inside of VIP yet from the attack. They are going to be aware that there are defenders sitting around inside of there. One drone's going to get thrown on in, then shut chop on out as airy cooking this nade trying to see if she can get the angle it's gonna deal a lot of damage on the pandy but the peak and then the second frag from drake is gonna do it this is already starting to make things spicy in this round as lost souls off to a very strong start but shanice is all the way at the back of theater again she was able to get one kill from this position before will she be able to follow up and get another one in this round as it doesn't look like airy's gonna drone it out could potentially run on in and just get eliminated here which would really put a spanner in the works because she is the sledge and that's going to be it. Shanice peeks on up, gets that kill and hopefully gets the hell on out of there. Make things an even four versus four for the rest of this round. Absolutely. But again, just as a note, as soon as you see this Monty in that doorway, that's when you know exactly where that plant is coming. And nine times out of ten, a lot of teams will get a bit too tunnel vision -y there and they will not rotate if things start getting a bit spicy. The Yvonne gate has been reactivated as well. So again, more utility will need to be burnt out by the attackers in order to go for that service plan as well. Much to think about, Dino, and it's getting very, very intense. Again, Sparkle team really don't want this to go to match point right now. So they are going to be fighting tooth and nail. And this is what I mean about this lobby area. Oh, there we are. Drake taking down Shanice, sneaking around towards that lobby. But again, I'm not sure if Drake is aware of that mirror window. So relatively soon, if not from the call out, they are going to get a little bit of information as to where that player is. Now, there's one player actually situated inside of lobby it's going to be the mirror and drake coming through the courtyard able to get that kill onto mir as we are now in a two versus four that mirror is going to be providing a lot of intel as you say as the smoke canister is going to be slowing things down and making it more difficult for lost souls to go for this plant but hissia forced out of position as she gets knifed down by yenna follow up as well leaving just luna left alone one versus four it's going to be meet inside of the lobby hallway to get that kill and now grace Lost Souls one round away from winning against Sparkle Team on Sparkle Team's map of Coastline. I'm so confused how that shield like kill came through, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I maybe, okay, maybe, you know, you see the smokes go down by the mirror window. You panic a bit. Your attention is turned towards that lobby. But in the meantime, surely you would hear that Monty come stomping up the surface a little bit, but evidently not. That must have been terrifying to just suddenly die and be like, why, why am I dead? Why am I dead? And it's because no one's been aware that this Monty has just walked in to sight. Yeah, the, the smokes are up. Monty walks through and then all of a sudden you hear this clunk behind you of the shield retracting and you just get punched in the face. That's... I'd simply decease myself. <laughs> <laughs> I lost souls. So much momentum right now. Oh, 100%. Match point. Six to three. Sparkle, you have to win three rounds off the bat to get it to overtime. Still be a chance of winning this match, you know. It is looking fantastic for Lost Souls. And we did say, we did say that if they won tonight, it would cause such an upset because, again, Sparkle team being in one of those top two positions as well, they really just want the constant dubs as much as possible. Both Sparkle team and Elf Project is the idea of, okay, we know we're safe. We're in the very, very tippity toppity. But we just want to keep winning. We want that kind of. Uh, it is boasting power, really, isn't it? Oh, we only dropped like one, one map, if that. Like, yeah, I'm, Sparkle team, they are safe in that top four. But what they probably don't want to have happen is have to play Delta Project in the opening round of the playoffs. Mm. <laughs> so if they drop down to position three or position four, you know, depending on how well Randy's do and how the other games go tonight, it could make things in the playoffs far much more difficult for them than it necessarily needs to be. And I'm sure they're not looking forward to the prospects of having to play, you know, Delta Project in the opening round. Yeah, absolutely. And again, if you're a Delta Project fan, perhaps you really want that. Perhaps you want it to be like, oh, actually, it's either Delta or nothing. Like, we, <laughs> you know, fully, fully mad for it. So Delta fans are probably going mental behind the screens right now. Uh, Yana going to be getting some of those 
Exploding Drones trademarked on into the building. Going to be getting rid of this one shield and an ADS and going to get some information as to where the Legion of Luna was sitting. Normal drone, not trademarked. Is going to follow up on afterwards and see if he can gain a little bit more information as Lost Souls. Bit hard to discern where they're actually trying to go for their push from the moment. They're just trying to take the fights, it looks like. Yeah, and again, this seems a bit more direct. This seems a bit more aggressive. This feels a little bit more... Okay, time to end it now. Flores Grown's going in, going to clear a ton of utility. Very getting aggressive on the Aquarium Balcony. Doesn't manage to take down Maya, though. Maya's going to take her out before she can cause any the more carnage. I'm sure she's aware. Oh my god, the, t the health, Dino! The tiniest bill of health! Goodness gracious me. That's one to be upset about, but... Mia is going to go down and Meep is going to be able to get that kill onto Pandy as well. Already lost souls back in the advantage of this Get round. Ready, Obviously, without those firebolts and without those smokes, it's going to make things a bit more difficult working their way on into the site. But Mia is so isolated from the rest of her team right now inside of Aqua. It's going to be almost impossible to get her back up for all intents and purposes. This is a four versus three from here on out. Absolutely, 100%. And again, I think Aerie is now aware of the fact that maybe this player is down a little bit. Yenna falling to Shanice, however, but Meep is going to trade that back onto Histia. And realistically, it's all of that on to Shanice and Luna in a, what I would consider a two versus two. However, I will say, Maya probably watching this happen is feeding this intel to her teammates, but it's not going to stop Aerie there. Goodness gracious me, Dino. Lost Souls have won this out against the French Death Stack. Of sparkle germany versus france only one can win and it is lost souls yeah just a stunning performance from lost souls being able to just walk on through coastline versus sparkle team really not what we were predicting would be happening going off of previous season form but mm -hmm. i mean just, I'm very happy. That was an, intel an intense game coming through from Lost Souls and a great performance from them all around. 100%. I mean, I, you know, a little bit, it had me in the first half, not going to lie. It was getting a bit too even, Stevens. And then I think, yeah, Lost Souls just went zero to 100. And it's this constant thing throughout the season where they have just gone zero to 100. And that, m that match certainly uh, showed that, to be honest. Uh, and again, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest coming in to talk to us this evening it is dry hello hello i'm not a special guest you are the specialist it. of guests the most special guest i guess that i have was... to take it yes you do <laughs> <laughs> that was an incredible performance you yeah. must be absolutely buzzing right now we are like mm -hmm. um i think it was six three and everyone was like yo guys you realize it's match point yeah. and i was like <laughs> okay <laughs> it's, it's just i don't know what happened but damn it was fun to play today that's that, i can tell you that you spoke to us last week saying that you sort of as a team weren't sort of planning and strategizing out the games as much you were just going into it and having fun was that the same game plan for tonight and it was literally the same game plan um i don't know it's just something made click today and it just worked i don't but know I <laughs> <laughs> well i'll save it for us one thing for sure it almost became like cooked grenade simulator there was uh, for some our observer just for like a good section of time was just constantly catching just all of you just cooking nades and i was just uh, like this is getting insane now there's so much utility being sent in the direction of sparkle team and it's not even to clear utility at this point it's just to kill them it's just to cause them a lot of pain and upset and upset you certainly have caused because again going into this me and dino were telling the audience that you know sparkle team and delta they're in that top two position but they want to be getting as many wins as possible in this late season before we go into the playoffs so you've certainly caused the best kind of upset tonight to is taking down one of the best teams in the in the in the table so yeah definitely get the uber eats in tonight <laughs> <laughs> we we will do we will do but i mean it's it's just fun to play and i think like since the game against six nation i think just mm. something clicked that's mm. that's the only thing that i can describe it um we just worked from from that point on and it's just it's just so so nice it's it's kind of sad that it's actually the last game like mm -hmm. i can only imagine how nice it would have been if we had been playing like this literally from the very first game but mm. nonetheless um awesome girls like what can i say it's just 
such a great team. Absolutely. There's always season two as well. That's well, true. Yeah. You may not be out of it just yet. With this win, you've put yourselves up on to 10 points. Now, if on the off chance that the Frenemy and Six Nation HQ game goes to overtime, the max that one of those teams can get is two points. And with that solid win, 7-3, you've given yourself a nice boost in the round count and you could potentially be able to walk away and actually find yourselves in the playoffs. How do you feel about That's... that? We didn't even think about playoffs, <laughs> honestly. Like, um, <laughs> I love that. would be, that would You're be so just humble. boom. Like, oh. I, no, we, we, like honestly, we didn't plan with playoffs. Um, our plan was to stay in the league, and we definitely did that. Like, no one can yeah. get us out of the league now. That was our main focus, next to just having fun and maybe winning. Um, so, I like how like, winning's the third on that list. That's, <laughs> that's very wholesome. It's it's just a thing if you have a fun team, if you literally just have, like, I don't know, over the past seven play days, I've made friends. And, and that's just oh. the point. It's not it's not about try-harding and comp necessarily. It's playing with friends. And we saw that it can do magic, more or less. Mm. But yeah, we didn't think of playoffs. Um, we're f I mean, I think we're fine if we land in it. Then again, I think playoffs would be pretty tough because I'm not there. <laughs> um, so it would be hard for the, for the girls like Ari and me. We both have comp experience. So mm. we kind of tell the girls if they need any help, if they need a sort of strat to be explained how you play a certain play style or a certain spot. We both do that because we have the most experience. Mm. So it would be a bummer to be in the playoffs just to not have someone with that comp experience and just getting stomped. I don't know. I think we're fine if we if we just stay in the league. We got that. So we're all happy and I hope we made Lost Souls happy. Um because I I can only say it again. It's awesome work they gave us as a fun team of players. It's just lovely. They are an awesome org because I actually you got it. I've got a little jersey jersey Let's now, go. and I'm gonna wear this this weekend. I think. Nice. Uh, go on a go out on the lash, wearing my nice little. <laughs> Woo! That's just beautiful. That's just gonna, beautiful. Yeah, fashion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's just looking good. It's awesome that they sort of like it. It took you a play day. It that did. they I got into to, it. But... Yeah, I think it's the the frets, the frets that we gave. <laughs> so thank you very much, Strike, for helping me fret in your org <laughs> into giving me clothes. Whenever I can, I guess. <laughs> just, good, just good to know. Maybe, maybe, maybe me and you need to go shopping sometime, you know, going to a few shops. Yeah. Stop, maybe stop maybe stores. we'll have some some more merch. <laughs> I, I talked to Melon. I hope we get some okay. some some hoodies. Like Excellent. I'm a person, I'm Excellent. I'm cold a lot. Yeah, same. same. That'd be good. Especially now we're going into winter. Winter is coming in the words yeah. of uh, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Reich, for coming in and talking to us again. And again, well, well done. Well played. You've had an amazing regular season. And I'm excited to see the future of your team. Likewise. Amazing. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Always a positive energy. And these, I, I literally love her. Like, she's just a vibe. She's a vibe at all times. And I love how wholesome the team is as well. Like, just, it's just a group of friends who just want to have fun playing Siege. They, they're not too into the sweaty tryhardness of it all. They just want to have a laugh. And I'm all about that. I'm 100% all about that. That is the positive vibes we need at all times. Um, but if you do want sweat, don't go anywhere because <laughs> potential vibe shift coming down <laughs> next as we do have the spiciest matchup of the evening. Dino, we have Frenemy versus Six Nation HQ. We will talk to the ladies and gentlemen at home about that after a short little break. So do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 